MQTT is gaining some traction among model railroaders. If you follow the NMRA X video series, you probably have seen David McMoran's introduction to MQTT in the latest issue. If not, you find the link in the description below. With the latest release of the IoT T-Stick software that supports the Black Hat throttle attachment for smartphones, I have also added two more communication modes that make use of MQTT. In this video I am going to show you how these new modes work and how you can use them to control your model railroad layout. Welcome to the IoTT channel, I am Hans Tanner. The first new mode I added is DCC to MQTT. The idea was to answer some requests from viewers saying Hans, I get it, you prefer Loconet, but my DCC system does not have Loconet, so how can I do some of the things you show in your videos? This made me think, and the result is a new mode that allows for feeding DCC commands from the track to an MQTT broker and then use them to control network connected devices. The second new mode is pure MQTT. In videos number 48 and 49, I compared the topic structure of different solutions for adding MQTT to a model railroad layout, and what followed was a quite interesting discussion. My conclusion from it was that my way of doing Loconet over MQTT, as introduced the first time in video number 1, is probably the most effective solution as long as it is just about using MQTT to extend Loconet to the Wi-Fi network, while for other purposes a more versatile approach might be beneficial. So I decided to add an additional communication mode that allows the user to choose whatever topics for every message type and device. Here is the layout control example I am going to use to demonstrate these new modes. In the first step we use some LEDs to display the position of switches and signals of a hidden yard on the control stand of the layout. And in the second step I am going to use that information to create a remote supervisor panel without wire connection to the layout. On this panel I am not going to show the position of the individual switches, but rather the track that is being selected by the current settings of the turnouts. So, this example covers two of the three typical use cases that I explained in earlier videos. Layout control and attached logic. The third use case, interfacing, then would be to go from here and send commands to control the turnouts using whatever interface technique is provided by the installed command control system. But that's a topic for a future video. And if you want to make sure you don't miss it, you should consider subscribing to the IOTT channel and click the bell icon so you have a premium seat when new videos come out. For the purpose of this demonstration, I am just using an 8x8 LED matrix and the description of the meaning of each LED. Of course, you can use wired LEDs instead and place them on a panel with your track plan. Let's get started with the local display. As mentioned before, the layout is powered by DCC, but no Loconet, so I need to pick up the information when switches or signals change from the track signal. To do so, I connect a DCC breakout board to the DCC track and connect an IoTT stick to the growth port. To connect the LED strip, I use a blue hat. Since this is just a local board for this first step, here is how I set up the IoTT stick. Communications mode is DCC and the selected hat type is blue hat. Now I can configure the LEDs and match them with the DCC commands I want to display. The position of switch number 1 should be indicated by LEDs number 1 and 3. I want them to show blue if the LED is in the corresponding position and remain dark if it is not. So I enter 1 and 3 in the LED field separated by a comma and click individual colors 
as the switch cannot be in both positions at the same time. I then select switch and enter a zero for DCC address number one. This offset is due to switch and signal addresses treated differently in the DCC standard, but that's another story. It is just important to know that switch addresses are entered with an offset of one. Next, we can specify the settings for each position and call status. Since call status is not important for this application, we use the same settings for coil on and coil off. So for LED number one, position thrown, we set the on color to blue and the off color remains empty, which means the LED is off. For LED three, position thrown, we leave the on color open and set the off color to blue. And the other way around for the closed positions. Then we can click the plus symbol and create the next entry. There is a little trick here actually. If I hold the control key down while clicking the plus symbol, the newly created entry is a duplicate of the current entry. So all I have to do is changing the LED numbers and the switch address, which helps to speed up the process. Then I create a new entry for the first signal. It is just one LED that changes color according to the aspect. The number of aspects is not predefined, so I can create additional aspect lines up to a total of 32, which is the maximum number of aspects allowed in the DCC signal data format. I am normally using four aspects with value 0 for stop, which is the only value that is defined by the DCC standard, then 2 for slow, 5 for approach and 31 for track speed. Of course you can use the values that you are using for your signals. Just make sure that the aspect values are in ascending order, so the first line should always have the zero aspect. As before, I set the colors for each aspect and that's it. I can now copy the settings for all signals and just change signal address and LED numbers. When done with everything, I click on save and restart and the display is functional. So I can send switch and signal commands to the track and the blue hat shows the current status on the LED matrix based on the DCC commands that are picked up from the track. So far, so good. Now for the next step, sending the DCC commands to the MQTT broker. As in previous videos, I am using Mosquito on a Raspberry Pi 3 as my MQTT broker, along with Node-RED as tool to view and manipulate MQTT messages. To forward DCC messages to MQTT, all I have to do is changing the command source of the IOTT stick to DCC to MQTT. After saving this configuration, the browser displays the MQTT tab and allows me to set address and port of my broker. Further down, I can define the DCC broadcast topic that is used to publish the messages. By default, it is set to DCC BC. After saving, the IOTT stick starts forwarding DCC commands to MQTT, so we can use any MQTT viewer tool to connect to the broker and see what is coming along. As you can see here, the messages are coming in using a JSON formatted string. The first attribute is type, which defines what type of DCC command it is. The other parameters depend then on the type. For locomotive commands, it is typically decoder address, speed and function information. For stationary decoders, it is address, position and call status. And as you can see, the IOTT stick sends one-time commands like switch and signal commands as they are received from DCC. But the cyclic cyclical commands for mobile decoders are only sent when there is a change to speed, direction or function status of that particular address. This is to avoid repetitive transmission of the same information. Not so much because of the communication to the broker, but I noticed that some smartphones are not capable to display that many messages per second. 
and of course any human user would also be completely overwhelmed by the real-time flow of DCC messages. So it is more practical to filter out the cyclical stuff. Now that DCC commands are successfully sent to the MQTT broker, it is time to create the remote display. I am again using an IOTT stick with a blue hat and a simple LED strip, but this time I am just using the first five LEDs to indicate what track is selected by the current position of the turnouts. And I am configuring the IOTT stick to use the second new communication mode, which is MQTT. When I click Save and Restart, it seems nothing has changed. However, when I open the LED Chain Setup tab, it looks different. All the options for assigning LEDs to individual switches or signal commands are gone, and there is a new section labeled MQTT Settings. These settings allow for specifying topic names. At this time, the blue hat knows three different topics. The LED command topic is used to set color and brightness of an individual LED or an array of LEDs. The LED query topic is used to query the chain for the status of a particular LED and the LED replay topic is the topic name the blue hat uses to answer to query requests. S and P stand for subscribe and publish, which indicates in what direction of the communication the particular topic is used. The include LED number checkbox tells the blue box to make the LED number an integral part of the topic string. Here is an example. Let's assume I want to set LED number 5 to red and 50% brightness. Without the checkbox set, my MQTT command would look like this. If the checkbox is activated, I would add the LED number to the topic string. Both ways can have their advantages, depending on what you would like to do. Therefore, I made it configurable. The payload includes the LED number and the color, either in RGB or HSV format. If the LED number is already part of the topic string, it is not needed in the payload. If it is included anyway, it will be ignored. If the LED number is part of the payload, it can be specified as single number or you can give an array of LEDs, so you can set several LEDs with just one single command, like this. The message structure for the other topics is similar, and I am going to add a detailed description of the message formats to the myiott.org webpage. And just in case you wonder, yes, that new MQTT mode is also available with the yellow hat. The LED topics are the same as for the blue hat, and here is a screenshot for the topics that are available for the buttons. Also, when in MQTT mode, the IOTT stick provides an MQTT traffic viewer. When you open it, you can see a list of all messages that are received on the subscribed topics on one side, and all published messages on the other. So, in this MQTT mode, you have complete control over each individual LED and the usual mechanisms of the IOTT stick to set LED colors based on incoming switch and signal commands are completely bypassed. Of course that means that we need to provide this logic somewhere else, and that is where Node Red comes into play. Here is how it works. Node Red subscribes to the DCC broadcast topic and therefore gets all incoming commands from the broker. These commands are then forwarded to a function which keeps track of the current position of the switches and determines which track is selected by the current combination of turnout positions. It then sends a command to the broker and subscribed consumers that contains the new LED settings according to the calculation. So in Node Red, we need to create a simple flow with an MQTT receiver for DCC, a function node that does all the calculations, and an MQTT sender node. 
The nodes are then connected to create the flow and I add a JSON converter node which converts the incoming MQTT message strings to JSON objects so it is easier to access the data in the function code. Incoming and outgoing modes are set to the selected broker and topics. In my case DCCBC and LED set. The function itself is pretty simple. It consists of four parts. The first part is just the initialization of the data. It is only called once from the injector node when the flow starts. All it does is creating a data array to keep track of the current switch positions. Note that the function is written in a way that I can always add more switches to the watch list by simply adding new array elements. Incoming DCC commands are processed in three steps. In step number one, I verify that the command is for one of the switches I am watching. If so, I update and store the latest position in the data array. In the second step, I check the position of each monitor switch and determine what track is selected. I use a for loop to iterate through the switches and look for the first one that is in a thrown position, that is where the track is selected. If all switches are closed, the selected track is the last one. The result of the check is then again stored in the flow. And in the third step, I send LED commands to the LEDs in case the selected track did change. This results in two messages. The first one is to clear all five LEDs and set them to dark. That is the off message. The on message tells the corresponding LED to come up green with 25% brightness. Note that for sending two messages, I am using two output ports for the function. The off message is sent right away, while the on message is passed through a 200 millisecond delay node. This ensures that the sequence of the messages is always correct and it creates a nice effect on the LEDs as the display first goes all dark and then comes up with the new track. That's it. I click on deploy to activate the program and here we go. My first panel continues to display the individual switch positions from DCC and on the remote display I just get an indicator light for the track that currently is selected and all this just based on the DCC commands that are picked up from the track so it works with any DCC system. Of course this flow is very simple and leaves a lot of room for modifications and improvements. If you want to use it as a base for your own experiments you can download it from my github page and import it into your Node-RED. So I hope this example gives you some ideas about what can be done with MQTT and how it works in general. In summary, here is what we have done. Using a DCC interface board, we pick up DCC commands from the track, convert them to MQTT messages and send them to the broker. This is done by the first IoTT stick which also runs the local LED display. Then we use a node red flow to listen to incoming DCC commands, calculate the selected track, determine the corresponding status of the LEDs and send LED commands back to the broker. Finally, we use a second IoTT stick and blue hat to drive the indicator LEDs on the remote panel that let the yard master know what track has been selected. Of course, this is just a very simple example, just to demonstrate the general structure and message flow in an MQTT application. Much more is possible once you start experimenting with that exciting technology. For this video, that's all. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you. If so, click the like button below to let me know. Doing so helps to promote this video and the IoTT channel in general because YouTube likes the likes. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.